as Women's Month draws to a close, we continue to look at the role of women in science, and one of them is Dorcas Lakhanyane, a botany and plant science master's student at the University of Johannesburg. Her research into the role, application, and trade of traditional medicinal plants in South Africa grabbed local international attention. Uh, the award-winning researcher joins us in studio to talk more about the threat to our rich biodiversity and the illegal trade of protected and threatened species. That's quite a mouthful. Very uh, warm welcome to you, Dorcas. Thank, Thank you so much Thank for you. making the time this morning. What exactly do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a researcher by profession. I'm a botanist yeah. uh, and I venture into genetics. So I have just employed a new technology which we call DNA barcoding to identify uh, species or rather fragments of plants that could be endangered at our local markets, at border control posts or just in nature. So the problem is once you uproot a tree it has multiple uses. So I need to know if an endangered plant is, is uprooted and sold on the market how can I track it? How do I find it? Oh, wow. Usually you look at specific parts of the plant but if it's degraded to a point that you can't identify it using the eye what you can use is its DNA because DNA doesn't change for any living human being. Are you using the assumption <laughs> that that uh, uh, potentially uprooted plant mm -hmm. could have been the last one or the only one left? We do have statistics out there about plants, plant statistics. So we know which plants are endangered, which plants to look out for, which plants are protected. So once those plants are known to be at marketplaces, known to be traded with at border controls, we are then it's our job to then track them down and say, listen, if you find maybe a powdered fragment of something, hey, call these people. If you find there's a rhino horn scandal where yeah. they actually grind the rhino horn now to and make a it a, a powder. So how are you going to distinguish a mere powder yeah. versus a rhino horn powder? So what Just does your research hope to achieve? What's your end game? Are you hoping to protect the species and the plants and the a, a flora uh, 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 or fauna or are you hoping to expose the use of medicinal pl or of plants for medicinal purposes? See my research specifically works with traditional medicine so what I do is I try to venture out and see of the traditional medicines that we do know those that are threatened and are known to be at markets which ones are they in what life form they come in and yeah. how can I track them? So it's, a, it's an educational perspective. With an hope to? With a hope to actually create awareness about the plants that are threatened and also just to educate our traders more, even though they can educate us as well as to how they harvest, but also just to have to open up a channel of communication between the scientist, yeah. the government, and the trader. So how can we work together to ensure that when we're trading and we're healing, because let's be fair, traditional African medicine is needed. It is. It does form a big market of basic health care. So we're not trying to say no, don't trade in these. However, can we find an alternative to this plant if it is endangered to have a conversation between government, the traditional healers and the scientists? So that's... So the question that comes to mind is, how are you even able to trace? Because the traditional medicine uh, mm -hmm. space is not necessarily uh, properly accounted for, is yeah, it? it's not. Um, so what we do is we work with the traditional healers. Oh, okay. We come in and we say, guys, these are the plants that we suspect you might be using for this <laughs> medicine. <laughs> okay. And according to us, they are on the threatened list or on the protected list. Yeah. Do you mind if we take a sample of what you use or the concoction that we use? Take it for texting. And when we look at the DNA, the DNA genetic makeup of a plant can never, ever change. Yeah. So we'll know exactly what is in the plant, what is in the concoction. We will know, okay, there are these plants and there is a threatened plant. So guys, can you just maybe use an alternative? Are they not suspicious of your advances? Of course. Because there's always that sense that the academia, academic yes. world wants to take over the other, <laughs> other world. No. At first, I thought they would be, but to my surprise, they're actually very intrigued. They actually want more young people coming into the marketplace, learning more about their herbs. Okay. Because they're like, listen, not a lot of young people out there actually want to learn about traditional medicine. So you coming into our place as a sense of learning and research and also telling us what to do to keep our environments, which we do need to continue trading and harvesting in traditional medicine, 
Um, so it, it's really it's a good thing for you to come in, tell us, okay, this is where you can go. This is the substitutes that you can use yeah. and where you can go. So they are very open-minded and um, willing to learn. And that for me is all I needed because I'm I think it's awesome that well, you're yeah. also able to provide substitutes. Yeah. So the, the thing is, they are substitutes. They're just not known. Yeah. Chemically. So when you sit down with a healer, they have a vast array of knowledge. That and show them this is a, there's a science yeah, behind this. Yeah, there is a science behind it. Yeah. So it's working together with the traditional healer with a vast knowledge in As African. a young person yes. individually, how has that interaction been for you with traditional healers? Because there's always that sense that, oh, it's, it's things from, for older people, mm -hmm. uh, from olden days. Mm -hmm. We're young, we're modern, we're hip, we don't do these things. Honestly, when I first started the research, I had my stigmas and stereotypes to kind of break myself. I was scared, reluctant. I mean, you hear the rumors, you know, the stigmas behind the use of Muti. It's always a scandalous title. Oh, what could title. be done to you? Exactly. <laughs> so but then once I actually got into the environment and started speaking to the people, they became more family than um, oh, wow. me actually extracting information That's from them. That's beautiful. So they take you on a journey of how they actually themselves, because they were young once, how they themselves became traditional healers, how they have grown as people, and how the medicine has taught them life. So it's teaching me as well. Fantastic. And yeah, hopefully I'll blossom and represent them well. So now your work has got you nominated for an award. Mm -hmm. You're a finalist in the Top Young Independence Hundreds Awards. What, what is that all about <laughs> and what does it mean for you? So the Top Young Independence Award I was actually nominated anonymously. It wasn't so that was great. Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so once I found out what it was, I had to do research myself. It's um, it recognizes a hundred young in young people under the age of thirty five yeah. in the SADC region who they believe or feel are worthy of the title. Either you're a healer under the category healer, an innovator, an influencer, or just somebody that comes up with great ideas. So they have five How tiers awesome of that? categories and I've been nominated under the healer category for my work. How do you feel about your chances? Hey. <laughs> 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 I feel I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Being nominated alone is just great. So we getting into we wrapping up August, getting mm -hmm. into September, which mm -hmm. is Heritage Month, yes. and a lot of the work that you have done speaks to heritage. Uh, what what have you learned in terms of your heritage, South Africa, the country's heritage, in 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 the work that you've been doing? Honestly, coming from a modern day girl, driving myself entirely into what is deep heritage, I've learned to submit and actually love our a African heritage and actually understand that all those stories and riddles and rhymes that our grandmothers and grandfather has been telling us have a meaning and have prosperity and longevity in them and that there's more to Africa than what meets the eye. Yeah. There's more to it. Has this process given you a newfound respect for the work of traditional healers? Definitely. Or what, what, tell us what, what are some of the things that you discovered, uh, myths and, re and truths. There is a myth which I, it's kind of my favorite. The burning of incense, people, is known to ward off evil spirits. Yep. That is the riddle and rhyme that you get. But if you look at it from a scientific point of view, you actually find that it, it's a disinfectant. So once you burn in pepo, it disinfects your room, meaning that no bacterial virus or looming thing can be in the room as a cleansing. And so this they is will scientifically use it, proven. This is scientifically proven. Oh, wow. So that's something I can say. Yeah. So you learn how they speak in riddles and rhyme to kind of understand why they would say something the way they do. And you take that thought and you relate scientifically and you find there's meaning. But what does that mean academically? Because that <laughs> means... They knew something. Yes, they, they were did. onto something. They did. So it, 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 it's like what an academic, what we're taught in classes, and what I'm finding is that traditional healers are people that are, no, are taught by life, not yeah. taught in classes. There are some lessons that you need to learn that will not be taught to you in classes. So when you engage with traditional healers on their level, on their ground, you actually get to learn more about how the human being works, how medicine works, how a plant can heal an array, an assortment of, of, of um, ailments, but how you hone into one. Yeah. So it's, it's like I'm studying medicine, <laughs> but traditionally. So what sort of responses have you gotten to your work? And uh, 
Uh, are there any plans to extend this project to the rest of the continent? Um, my response is always positive. I believe that my topic is one that you can always engage in, in any perspective. There are people that are, are, are reluctant to use traditional medicine. There are people who are like, hey, you are young and you're actually going there and you're finding out what our, our African plants are doing for us, for our own healing. Yeah. So yes, big ups to that and then um, the traditional healers themselves have kind of just taken me in and are like listen we will teach you as much as we can so that you can debunk or rather demystify who we are as people. I don't know if you're aware of this, but recently the African Union uh, decided to prioritize research because they, uh, they found that most of the time when there's things to study on the continent, mm. they then have to go elsewhere to go and find yes. experts and bring them in. What contribution do you think your work uh, will, will give to this country and the continent in terms of uh, work that is measured, uh, that is scientific and we can go back to and say, on the basis of this work, these are the outcomes in terms of taking either the country or the continent forward? I know that there's an, uh, a committee proposal saying that in Africa, we need to start documenting our traditional hip medicine. So we need to start filing and creating a pharmacopedia where we will have documented record of plants that are used medicinally and we can go back to it and look at it. Um, how I feel this will help us is that we can pair our known African medicine with Western known medicine and actually use them in conjunction, not separately, but use them in conjunction to provide healing for Africans. So it will be African solutions for African ails, African solutions for African illnesses. So I feel like that has longevity in that when you do, there's a lot of research to be done in, the, in actually finding the plants because yeah. none of them, most of them have not been recorded. There's actually a lot of research to be done in how you can use them in conjunction with Western medicine because right now the dilemma is someone will visit a traditional healer and not necessarily say that to their doctors. So when you're being prescribed something, we're not quite sure what the side effects are. So we just need an openness between the two because we understand that our African people do use traditional medicine and we also understand that they do use Western medicine. So if they can create a platform where they can be used in conjunction together, that would be the epitome of and it. And have a bigger knowledge of what bigger it is that they're putting in their bodies. Yes. But now, uh, the other conversation that comes in here, your kind of study, studies historical stuff mm -hmm. of what things what thi things that people have been doing. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's now this conversation about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. the fourth industrial revolution. How do these conversations impact on your work? The fourth industrial revolution does need history. Everything goes back to history. If you don't understand your history, there's no way you can project forward. So I understand how we can implement our technology. For example, I'm using a new science, DNA barcoding. That in itself does push the f 4IR agenda. However, I'm, I'm using it to actually go back in time to find out how we can improve ourselves as Africans, how we can improve ourselves as South Africans. So 4IR is definitely needed. However, it needs to be implemented within the right solutions. So if we can implement our 4IR to actually serve Africans, uh, to serve our solutions, our problems, be it uh, food scarcity, be it uh, lack of resources to medicine, then that, that would be great. Yep. Have you started some process of protecting your innovation in terms of intellectual property? Yes, I actually have forwarded my work to our I IP people at the university just to have a look at it to see if there is IP around the work. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. We hope to be talking to you in future to see how far you've gone with this process. Thank you so Dr. much. Dr. Uh, a botany and plant science master student at the University of Johannesburg.